this lesson, I'll be discussing alternatives to petrochemicals. So here we see a mine, and they're mining various petrochemicals. And unfortunately, they're made from fossil fuels, which are finite. So we get coal, natural gas, and also oil for our petrochemicals. And we use petrochemicals for a wide range of things, like plastics, fuels for cars, all sorts of things. But unfortunately, we need to find alternatives. And that's what I'll be discussing today. So fossil fuels are a limited resource. So what happens is petroleum, it's an important source of raw material for petrochemicals. And it's harvested, refined, and used intensively in the modern world. And here we can see an oil rig, which is offshore. And coal is mined to generate electricity in power plants. Unfortunately, the reserves of fossil fuels are finite, so they will not go, not going to last forever. And the most optimistic reserve estimates are coal will last for about 417 years, oil, 43 years, can you believe it? Only 43 years worth of oil left. So this is why we really need alternative sources. And natural gas around about 167 years. So they are depleting rapidly. And we need alternative sources of raw materials and they need to be developed. So let's look at important uses of petrochemicals. Now petro means rock and oleum means oil from ancient Greek. So that's where we get petroleum oil from rock. So petrochemicals are used as industrial chemicals and solvents and also for plastic products like bags and bottles and all sorts of different plastic products. Also for synthetic rubber and for fertilizers. For dyes, detergents and synthetic fibers. So petrochemicals are used for a very wide range of things so we need to find an alternate source before we run out. And also let's look at environmental concerns of petrochemicals. Synthetic polymers made from ethylene, which I discussed uh, in an earlier tutorial, such as PVC, plastics, that sort of thing. Most synthetic polymers are derived from petroleum and it's a non-renewable resource. They are non-biodegradable. So we're producing a lot of rubbish from all of these plastics from petrochemicals. But biopolymers from natural sources are biodegradable and Let's look at that. So biomass, it's an alternative resource, okay? Biomass is carbon-based matter, mainly derived from plants. So from this picture, these are examples of biomass. We have alcohol fuels, which we can get from fruits, garbage, which we can recycle. Ironically enough, it comes from petrochemicals, but you can use it to actually make different fuel sources. Uh, crops, landfill gas, and wood. So it can be used extensively as a fuel and as construction material. Um, and it was actually, biomass was actually used before we even discovered petrochemicals. So it's, it's quite interesting that now that we're running out of petrochemicals, we have to kind of go backwards to biomass again, because that's where we're going to get our new resources. So if you burn biomass, it will heat water into steam. It will then move a turbine and it will create electricity. So unfortunately, currently, biomass is not as cost effective as petrochemical sources. Uh, so the low cost, relatively low cost, of the raw materials from fossil fuels creates less incentive for research into alternative sources, which is a little bit sad, but it's just the way it is at the moment. So only when fossil fuels become scarce and expensive will natural alternatives seem an economically viable option. So I think we need to talk to our governments and say, well, I think that biomass is probably a better way to go. So let's look at biomass. It's made up of 70% carbohydrates. And this diagram here is a picture of a carbohydrate. And all the little bends you can see there are carbon atoms. So as you can see, it's a repeating polymer, okay? And it's a natural polymer. And carbohydrates include cellulose and sugars. And this picture is actually a picture of cellulose. And as you can see, there's an N here, which means it's a repeating unit. So this particular picture of cellulose will actually repeat itself about, it has about 10,000 monomers in cellulose. It contains the basic carbon-carbon chain structure to produce ethene. If you remember, 
from earlier, ethene is two carbon uh, molecule, carbon atoms with a double bond. So what happens? Cellulose can be broken down into simple sugars or glucose. So this is our cellulose polymer, which can be broken down into glucose. And that's our diagram of glucose, our structural formula. So cellulose is actually repeating units of glucose, which is a sugar. Okay. What happens? Glucose can then be fermented into ethanol, which is this structure here two carbons with a hydroxy group here and ethanol is very useful for amongst other things as a fuel additive and ethanol can be dehydrated into ethylene so if you take off from this structure if you take off a hydroxyl group or an OH group you have water coming off and you get ethene so then we start all over again and we can use ethene in addition polymerization to make the various products that come from petrochemicals. So ethylene is a starting material for many petrochemical products, for example polystyrene, PVC, polyurethane, poly many things. Um, so ethylene is very important and we can get that from biomass instead of having to dig it out of the ground from fossil fuels. Now biomass is a renewable resource and the rate at which it's regenerated it can keep up with the rate at which it's used. So that's a good thing for our environment. It's greenhouse neutral, another positive. And the production of ethylene from biomass is currently more costly than using petroleum. So this is a problem. At the moment, it's a bit too expensive. We have to, in order to get this biomass, we have to grow large supplies of biomass materials, which means large areas of land and fertilizers are required. So it's a bit of a problem, but once we get there, the alternatives to petrochemicals will, will be more productive and cost effective. So that finishes our theory about biomass and alternatives to petrochemicals. Now we'll look at a few questions. Question one, which of the following groups of chemicals contains only petrochemicals? So if we look at all of our alternatives, part A, petrol, ethene, lubricating oil, iron, First of all, iron, it's not a petrochemical, it's just a metallic element. Part B, aviation fuel, polyethylene, water, nylon. Water, it's not a petrochemical, water's water. Part C, PVC, road tar, kerosene, wax, sounds good to me. Part D, candle wax, sodium chloride, which is just salt. So salt is not a petrochemical. Therefore, our answer there is part C. They're all types of petrochemicals, made from petrochemicals. And they're also all derivatives of ethylene. Question two, many scientists are stressing the need to develop alternative sources of compounds presently manufactured by the petrochemical industry. This is because, A, petrochemicals are manufactured from fossil fuels. Yes, they are. B, fossil fuels are non-renewable. That's true. C. Fossil fuel resources are finite, so they will run out. Yes. D. All of the above. That's our answer. So all three parts to that question are correct. Question three. Describe petrochemical materials. Petrochemical materials are manufactured products that are derived from fossil fuels, such as petroleum. So your plastics, your PVCs, your outdoor furniture, all sorts of products. Petrochemical materials include a vast range of polymers and household chemical agents that each of us use every single day. Um, every day. We use, any, we use so much from the petrochemical industry. It's very important. And, yeah, plastics are a ubiquitous part of modern day life, which means they're everywhere. We use them all the time. They're everywhere. So that's describing petrochemical materials. Question four. Identify 10 chemicals presently produced by the petrochemical industry. And you could easily rattle off hundreds and hundreds of different chemicals produced by the petrochemical industry. So petrol, aviation fuel, diesel, candle wax, road tar, ethene, polyethylene, which is from the polymerization of ethene, polyvinyl chloride, which is 
another addition polymerization of ethene, PVC for piping, stuff like that, kerosene for burning, lubricating oils for motors and engines, and synthetic fabrics such as radon, uh, uh, not, not radon, excuse me, Kevlar and those sort of things, nylon, which I'll discuss in the next tutorial. So all sorts of things for that question. And finally, question five. Discuss the need for alternative sources of compounds presently manufactured by the petrochemical industry. So why do we need alternative sources? The petrochemical industry involves the manufacture of various items from the refining of petroleum. And it's based on the use of fossil fuels, which are non-renewable and most are likely to run out within the next 100 years or so. So we really need to think about alternatives to petrochemicals. Virtually all polymers and all kinds of fuels are produced by the petrochemical industry. So polymers and fuels are considered to be essential for our everyday modern existence. And an alternative source of fuels and petrochemicals is vital to continue our way of living. And it's crucial to find another source of these chemicals because we use them so much. So therefore, what I've been discussing today, biomass, it's considered to be a good candidate as an alternative to petrochemicals because we're going to run out of them very, very soon and we need to find alternatives.